Uh, yeah. UFC it's, 168 is in the books. And it's like asses to asses in here. You said it, not me. I couldn't let people not hear what you just said. We were talking about apples to apples, and Kevin says, yeah, it's like that game, asses to asses. I'm, I'm, I don't all, know. I'm, all, I'm, all, I'm all twisted up because what we just witnessed was just a Wow, that is part. a bad way to put it. What? I'm all twisted up. It could have been worse. As his foot twisted. Rice Krispie uh, card. Snap, crackle, retire. Anyway, let's start out with the catch. It was actually it was supposed to be what a, um, a, a, a fight at 145, but it ended up being a catchweight fight. Because Diego's uh, portly little self couldn't make weight. Diego didn't uh, make weight, and it didn't really matter because no. it doesn't really put it on him. Um, mm -hmm. It's a reason that kid is ranked number six in the world right now because he is he is just getting better and better and better with each with each, with each fight. Um, what? <laughs> Let you um, go. No, no. I, I he he is. You know, and and you know, it's funny. I thought when they entered the octagon, I was thinking, you know what? We were kind of thinking, okay, this kid Brando looked pretty good in the house. And he's got some knockout power, and he looked like he was doing pretty well for a while there, and then all of a sudden. And then the ref said, "Fight." Yeah, and in in the in the. And Dustin worked him. And then let me tell you right now, with, with the way these first three fights went, this whole entire card could have been over an hour ago. Yeah, easily because it, it went fast. Dustin Poirier ended his fight in a TKO in the first round, four fifty four. Yep. Um, then you had Jim Miller fight uh, Fabrizio, and basically, well, mm. Fabrizio, as I would say. I didn't bring my bottle for you peoples, but Jim Miller, man, and we said it leading up to this event. It's just he gets it done. He, he but he he's got that that complex when there's a title fight, and then it just what kind of complex that I can't win complex. He's got that he's got that <laughs> Uriah Faber. <laughs> he's got that Uriah Faber in him, and I like Jim right. Miller. I mean, he's he's I mean, as the word of the night seemed to be thorough, because mm -hmm. we had a discussion about the the Navy SEALs versus. Um, no, our boy Kerry, my buddy Kerry was up in here talking about, do you think the Navy SEALs and like the Delta Force guys could beat like the guys from the Roman Empire? He's like, they, they, you know, and, and we were, I'm like, Kerry, that's like saying Jim Thorpe could come back and run like 200 yards on, on the guys today in the NFL. Like, I'm like, it's these guys, these new soldiers are, or whatever, I can't even talk about yeah, it. Yeah, it was, it was my, sure. it was, it was, it was entertaining. It was almost as much fun as this next fight we're going to talk about. Which, 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 uh, you know, I, I picked Josh Barnett. I, I thought, okay, maybe he can get this guy up against the, the cage, use this dirty boxing. He had a lot of success during his career with that. But I tell you what, man, Travis Brown proved once again that he is one of the best heavyweights out there, man. He is just accurate. He is together. I mean, he throws leg kicks. He throws punches. He can fight off the takedown. He can do everything. And, and as uh, Luda would say, throw them bows, because that's what he caught he, Barnett with. I mean, he came down on him and down on him and down on him like. And he was literally a cheap hooker. And uh, uh, yeah, he was. He, he, that gets he, my he, attention. He was, <laughs> just like what, what? cheap hookers? How, how much? Where? How much? But uh, but it, it. But the thing is, and it, and it brings us back to what we talked about. It's like. What would have happened if he did not tear his hamstring in that fight with uh, Bigfoot. Antonio Bigfoot Silva? Because, you know, he was on a roll, and he would be undefeated. I mean, arguably, you could say he might have went on to win that fight or had a better showing, but, I mean, he's looked incredible. Yeah, I mean, his his previous, he had a no contest versus Chess Congo. Right. Congo got docked one point for holding up the blah, 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 bunch of, yeah, so, I mean, that was... Other than that, Brown, Brownie, or Brown's got one loss, and that right. was to Antonio Silva. And like we all said, he got hurt, but he beat Alistair Overeem, beat Gabriel Gonzaga, yeah. um, just dismantled Josh Barnett. I, I would yeah. have to say that, I mean, he's, this has got to put him one more fight in a title shot? Or, I mean, who's Kane lined up the fight next? I don't know. I mean, I would think he, he he could fight him. I mean, I would give him a title shot. I don't see, I mean, because Velasquez has fought a lot of people, though. Santos has fought. Between those two, they fought everybody. No one, I don't think Brown has really fought any. I, I would give him a shot. I mean, now, what is he ranking? Kane, Kane Velasquez is 6'1. Mm -hmm. Travis Brown, 6'7. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking if, if Travis could use his length and his jab and stay away, I mean, it could be. He could, he could, I think he could give Kane Velasquez a little bit of problems. I mean, if you see the one fighter that, uh, Kane Velasquez had problems with was Czech Congo, who's not the top tier heavyweight MMA fighter in mm -hmm. the UFC, but it's just his length and the way he fights, it gave Velasquez some trouble. Now you're looking at a guy in Travis Brown who's very similar to him. That could give him trouble. Now, let's get on to the main event fights. And and obviously it was the band weight fight between Ronda Rousey and Misha Tate. 
And it went like we thought, but it didn't happen as fast. But I'm, I'm going to tell you what. I, I will say this. Misha Tate hung in there. After the first round, when she became the first person to get through the first round, I noticed her boyfriend, Brian Carraway, was like, you made it through the first round. Like, that Woo-hoo! was like... That was like a huge accomplishment. And right there at that particular moment, I was like, okay, it seems like they don't even have enough confidence in her winning this fight, you know? And, and, it, and the thing, the thing that blew me away is, is, I don't know if anyone's ever watched, and I, I don't know how to put this, so I'm just going to say it. Watching girls fight, they come out and they do this. Mm-hmm. That's kind of like how Misha Tate came out and just threw punches like this. Mm-hmm. Like she, her emotions got over her and she got so out of, like, I, I think the person who beats Ronda Rousey legitimately knows how to box. Yeah. Stick, move, get away. It's Stick, move, time. get away. Yeah. Stick, move, get away. Like, and Misha Tate kept coming into her, kept coming into her. I'm like, what are you doing? She like, box him back up. Right. She, she, and she got in a couple of times and landed some good shots. And I'm like, okay, backpedal and then set yourself up, get, you know, get and, huge foot. Work. And I'm not knocking Ronda Rousey. Her game is obviously getting better. And oh, look, I, I, I knock, better. I knock all these MMA people because I just feel they, they have one thing, they stick to it. That's what they do. But one thing I would love to see, let's find out if Ronda Rousey has a shot. Like, jab, jab, back up. Jab, cross, jab, hook, jab something, and, right. and back up. Make Ronda come to you. Now, let me Instead, you she kept coming to Ronda. Ronda was like, okay, judo flip, judo toss. And then at the point in the third round, I mean, she had Misha locked up. Had the yeah. one arm pinned down, the one arm locked. I mean, she, she knew, and she just she, tapped quick. She didn't know. She couldn't get out of that, man. She could even walk over into a crucifix. I mean, she she definitely had her locked up. I, this is the thing. I, the one thing that surprised me is Ronda Rousey, you know, when she first came into the UFC, she has that one patented move. She's a judo expert and Olympian. And that's how she beat everybody. And this continues to be how she beats everybody. But her game is evolving. Now she's learning more MMA. Yeah. She could be dangerous because her punches look better. Her, her, her ground game looked better. Just, I was thinking, okay, she might get Misha Tate in the triangle. You know what I'm saying? There were so many things. And I think by the third round, Misha Tate was like, you know what, man? I'm just fighting. I'm not even, I'm not doing any damage. I'm just fighting to stay alive, to basically not get tapped out. So now the question is, who's a formidable opponent for Ronda Rousey? I think Sarah McGann. And you people are probably like, who the fuck is that? But this girl can wrestle her ass off. Was she number four overall? Yeah. She's number four overall. I also think that the girl who was originally supposed to fight her, Kat Zingano, would be good. But, you know, she blows out her ACL. She's out of action for a while. And I don't think after an ACL you come back and want to fight Ronda Rousey. Ronda Rousey. It's just... It's no. She, she could hold this title for a while. Now... Depends how... It's up to her. I mean, the, Bron, the, the biggest the biggest downfall to Ronda Rousey's career was the unfortunate passing of Paul Walker. Yeah, it really And I'm, I'm being I'm being serious. Yeah. Like, I'm not, I'm not it joking. Did, it, no, like, fucking, yeah. she was lined up to be in Fast and Furious 7 and then did just shit can the whole movie. Yeah. Um, with that series going by the wayside, I don't know what other kind of role Ronda Rousey could play, but I mean, obviously, and she's, she's and m- made a point of her. it. It does. I, we, George and I will joke about it and say, but that's, I mean, it sucks obviously for Paul Walker passing away, but it sucks for her that the movie's not going to be created and that was an opportunity for her. Cause I don't ever like to see anybody have doors closed. Yeah, doors closed. That sucks. That just completely sucks. Yeah. And, and she said, she's like, I don't want to do this forever. And that's smart. Mm-hmm. I, I think, and, and that's, that's a perfect segue coming into this next fight because, you have to look at what happened to Anderson Silva tonight and go, do you want to do this again? Well, I mean, 38 years old, you broke your leg, and then it was, in according to Ariel Hawani, Anderson Silva was backstage on a stretcher screaming. I mean, he obviously broke his tibia and his fibia. I mean, if the skin breaks, you're going to see bone. Thankfully, we didn't it's have to see that. Factor, yeah. yeah, it just. It, I mean, it was, it was a gruesome injury. I mean, and, and, and before that, I mean, if we talk about this fight, Chris Weidman had won the first round. Oh, yeah, hands down. Decidedly. And he was, he is somebody just, just has Anderson Silva's number. He doesn't fall for his taxes. He's, look at, look, look at Frankie Edgar and BJ Penn. Mm-hmm. You have to look no further than that. And then trust me, it, it just sucks when, when you have your, your heart invested in a fighter and a guy you like to see. I'm a big BJ Penn fan, a big Anderson fan. And you just watch him lose. And look, I'm not knocking Chris Weidman, mm-hmm. but he dominated two out of what? What have they fought? Three rounds now? Three rounds. Mm-hmm. So it's just like. Yeah. yeah. It's, and, you know, when I was telling George before we turned the cameras on, I'm like, you know, it's funny. I, I right now, think Anderson Silva should just re- retire. And, and why? Because you don't have anything else to prove. You're 38 years old. You just got a compound fracture. That's two years in the sport that is evolving. It's just like with GSP. You know, we've watched two of the greatest athletes in the sport probably say this is the end. Because you can't take time off in the sport. You see how good these guys get in a year. And... When you're not training for a year, maybe a year and a half, possibly two, 
the sport's going to pass you up. Yeah. I don't care how good you are. And and Anderson Silva, and I, I think because I was such a big Anderson Silva fan, I was kind of like the Fedor fans. We used to talk about Fedor, and George and I never were huge on Fedor's bandwagon because we just didn't follow him that much. And when we first got into talking about MMA, everybody talked about Fedor, and we're like, he's not that impressive. And we looked at fighters that could look like they were beaten. Brett Rogers, Andre Alaski almost beat him in, in, when they fought the last time. And Fedor won the fights, but he just wasn't as impressive as earlier in his career. And I think that's what you're starting to see with Anderson, with the Chelsea fights, with these Weidman fights. And at 38 years old and now coming off this gruesome injury, man, you got to just say, you know what, just, I, 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 you know, fight Roy Jones Jr. in a boxing match. Yeah, he can't stand up. Yeah. So you know, jump around on one leg? Well, the pogo stick. Still, you got to push. That's going to become comfortable. Yeah, he's, he's, not, he's not doing it for two years. So, Anderson's obviously out, going to be out. Let's just say he's done. Weidman took little to no damage in that fight. So, January, February, March, April. April or May, he fights again. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, who does he fight? Do Vitor. Think... That's that's the number one. And Vitor, you know. Um, and I'm going to tell you right now, Vitor is not going to be easy. No. I, I, I When I look at who Weidman has to fight, he's it, this this middleweight class is just like with, with GSP and, and the welterweight class. It's getting, even if Silva had pulled off this fight, I'm thinking, man, there is a lot of good guys. You're in a, you, you, he would still have eight more fights in his contract. There are a lot of good guys that he would Belfort, have. Belfort, Machida, Jacare. Yeah. Those three guys right there oh, are, are capable of beating, in my opinion, beating Weidman, but Weidman's also capable of beating them. Mm -hmm. So Weidman's it's solid. I mean, he's definitely solid. I, to me, honestly, you, you get to the point where you see these guys now and you see, okay, let's see how versatile they are. Let's how, how good they are against different fighting styles because Wyman's beat it, probably the greatest martial arts artist ever and, and into the streak and everything. So now you start to think, okay, can you go, how can you fight against this particular guy? And you know, styles make fights. How can you fight up against this guy? Machida is fucking all over the place. Right. Machida, yeah. Machida would be a tough fight, but like I told Kevin, Machida's so hot and cold. Mm -hmm. Like, Machida comes in, wins the bout at 205, and then promptly just doesn't pull it together. And then wins one or two more, falls off. Win the, he's just, there's no consistency. Me, personally, the guy I think who could take the belt from Weidman, I'm not going to say easily, but give him a run for his money, is Jacare. Yeah, Because Jacare, we knocked Jacare for not having stand-up in his last fight, he TKOs right. for a win. Mm -hmm. And before that, everyone says he's got the best BJJ in all of MMA. So I'm thinking... If his hands get better, there's going to be some problems at 185. Yeah, there's going to be problems. I mean, and, and we were looking at when they showed the top ten. It's it's it is now a stacked division. The Walters and the Middles are stacked. I mean, it's just so much talent coming into the sport. It's just crazy. Yeah. I don't see people holding belts for long like they you know you saw two and three years ago. I don't see any six year runs anymore. No, I, I think John Jones is the next to lose his belt. Yeah, and he almost lost this year. This year, you saw all the great guys in their classes get just either upset or really fought to the point where you're like, okay, did they win? Well, actually, I correct that. I think the next person to technically lose their belt is going to be Dominic Cruz when he fights Henan Burrell. Because yeah. Henan Burrell is the temporary champ. And to come off an ACL injury and have to fight Henan Burrell... Yeah. I, and Henan Burrell is the, t is the inter interim champion, everybody, but I will let you know that Vegas has him as the favorite. And Henan Burrell has defended this interim title, I think, twice mm -hmm. since acquiring it, which yeah. I find absolutely hilarious. Yeah. So I think that's one reason why this rule's been put in place. But that next car... And, and, Here's a, how do you feel about this UFC pass? This this UFC thing you can purchase. For instance, the next UFC card is January fourth. No, no, 